ओके लेट अस टॉक अबाउट ऑगमेंटेड लग्रांजियन मेथड टू सॉल्व कंस्ट्रेंट ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रॉब्लम The method is as follows. I want to minimize over a set f of x such that h of x is equal to zero. I define the augmented Lagrangian as f x plus lambda transpose h x plus c over two norm of h x square. and then we pick ck lambda k ck goes to infinity lambda k is bounded and i get a sequence xk which is argument of lc of x that's my algorithm <clears throat> so bdd stands for bounded let me just write bounded so ck goes unbounded but lambda k always remains bounded in this setting and so now the question is how do we pick ck and how do we pick lambda k and how do i solve this problem so let's uh, let's look at it from an example so i want to minimize half of x1 square plus x2 square x is in r2 and then my x1 minus 1 is equal to 0 this is my constraint let's try to solve it and see what kind of solution we get what's the optimal solution here can someone tell me what the optimal solution is 10 lambda star may be slightly difficult to compute but it's there in the book so i'm going to shamelessly copy from the book oh the book doesn't give lambda k ouch <laughs> okay i need to find lambda star now okay let's let's do it so the lagrangian the usual lagrangian so this is not augmented lagrangian we'll do the augmented one in a little bit i want to find lambda star so the lagrangian is half x1 square plus half x2 square plus lambda x1 minus 1 so the derivative x star lambda star is what is the derivative x1 star minus no plus lambda star and x2 star and this should be equal to 0 So what is my lambda star now? Minus one, because x one star plus lambda star has to be equal to zero. So 
x1 star is 1, so lambda star must be minus 1. Okay. Any questions so far? Everything looks straightforward. No surprises yet. So let's uh, let's do augmented Lagrangian now. Half x one square plus half x two square plus lambda x one minus one plus c over two x one minus one square. And now I need to do the argmen. I need to do the argmen of LC x lambda. Uh, x is an R2, so it's an unconstrained optimization. So what is x star of C lambda? It is argmen x in R2, LC x lambda. Okay, now I need to do the unconstrained minimization of this Lagrangian. Does this Lagrangian look convex in x? Is it convex in x? So it's square, linear, square. So it is convex. C is greater than 0. Remember, Ck is going to infinity, so C is supposed to be greater than 0. So this is also a, a positive number multiplied by a square function. So it's a convex function. So I can just set the first derivative equal to 0, and I can get the value of x star as a function of c and lambda. Uh, so let's find out what the first derivative is. What should I write? x1 lambda And then the sec uh, derivative with respect to x2 is x2 plus 0. I mean, it's just this one. Okay. So this needs to be equal to 0 at x star. So this implies x1 star 1 plus c plus lambda minus c and x2 star equals to 0. So I get c minus lambda over 1 plus c and 0. So that's my x star as a function of c and lambda. So if I pick a value of ck and lambda k, the value of xk can be derived from this expression. So this would imply that xk equals to ck minus lambda k over 1 plus ck and then 0.
let's try to solve the following. Let's try to find out what lambda k plus c k h x k looks like. I'm just pulling it out of my hat and I'm trying to evaluate this expression in this particular example. Can we do this? So we have lambda k plus c k times x k minus x x one minus one x k one minus one, which is c k minus lambda k over one plus c k minus one. Does this look correct? This is lambda k plus c k h x k. I'm just trying to compute this expression. Okay. I'm just trying to compute this expression. The way I got this expression is just from my imagination. And now I want to compute it and I want to show you something cool that happens with this expression. So, so far one thing you will recognize is if lambda k is bounded and you take c k going to infinity, what does this number converges to? So this is bounded, this is going to infinity, and this is uh, 1 plus ck. So this goes to 1, which is exactly what the optimal solution is, right? So we know that as ck goes to infinity, and lam if lambda k is bounded and ck goes to infinity, this thing converges to the optimal solution. So at least something we studied in the previous class holds true in this particular situation, which is we let ck go to infinity and we'll converge to the optimal solution. At least that's what is happening. That's something that's happening here. But one thing that's still troubling me is how do I pick the sequence lambda k? So that's what I'm trying to solve right now. I'm trying to update or hopefully if I can update my lambda k in this way, something cool is going to happen. And then I can pick that as my update function for lambda k. So let's try to evaluate this. So I have lambda k plus c k times h of x k. Uh, this is equal to lambda k plus c k. What do I get here? Minus lambda k minus 1 over 1 plus c k. Can someone help me with this? I get lambda k plus lambda k c k. So what does this number converges to as c k goes to infinity? So as ck goes to infinity, this thing converges to minus 1. And what is my lambda star? Minus 1. Okay. So it turns out that this value actually converges to lambda star as k goes to infinity. So I'm going to set, in this algorithm, I'm going to set lambda k plus 1 equals to lambda k plus c k h x k. Okay, so I have the update equation for lambda k. I can pick any c k that goes to infinity and I get a complete algorithm which tells me how to pick x k, how to pick lambda k plus 1. c k plus 1 is going to infinity, so I can just keep increasing c k as I want. And I will converge to the optimal solution x star in the limit. 
okay that's the augmented lagrangian method <coughs> so the result is as follows If gradient x L C K x K lambda k less than equals to epsilon k zero less than C K less than C K plus one, which goes to infinity. epsilon k goes to 0 lambda k is bounded and fifth is x k converges to x star such that gradient of h x star is full rank basically x star x k is converging to a regular point then lambda k plus c k h x k converges to lambda star which satisfies the satisfying gradient x l x star lambda star equals to 0. That is the key result which allows us to come up with this method of multiplier algorithm. Uh, this is x here because I'm minimizing over x and I'm getting xk. Okay. Yeah. Yes. How will lambda k plus one remain bounded to zero? C k goes to because h of xk goes to zero. And h remember h of x equals to zero is a constraint, right? So eventually I have to get to x h of x equals to zero. So this one goes to infinity, but this one goes to zero at a much faster rate. Than, than this one going to infinity. Does that make sense? If your h of x k so let's say c k equals to k and h of x k is less than 1 over k square or even, even if I make it 1 over k log k then c k h of x k is less than 1 over log k which goes to 0, right? All you want is h of x k to go to 0 much faster than how c k is going to infinity. And the reason why that happens is because you have this quadratic term here. So you are really penalizing h of x becoming larger by this particular term. <coughs> oh, and also x equals to rn. This only holds in the unconstrained case. CK? Yeah. You can pick any sequence that goes to infinity. Okay. Any sequence. It doesn't have to be something specific. Now let's try to figure out what happens if you don't pick CK going to infinity. You have a question? No. Okay. Uh, let's try to find out what happens if I don't increase CK to infinity. Let's see what happens to this algorithm.
okay? So let's assume CK is equals to C. This is, by the way, in your assignment as well, there is this question. What happens when CK is constant? So then my lambda K plus one equals to lambda k minus c over 1 plus c. How do I know this is going to converge or not? Let me write it in this fashion, 1 over 1 plus c lambda k minus c over 1 plus c. Is this sequence supposed to converge? Any thoughts? Lambda k is going to zero though? Or is, it is it going to zero? <laughs> so you see this is, uh, this is of the type Lambda k plus 1 equals to A lambda k plus B. When does the sequence converge? When A is less than 1. Which one? C. Yeah, C, C is always greater than 0. Remember, we are picking C going to infinity. So I want C to be greater than 0. Right? So this, this term is less than 1. So if this term, if absolute value of A is less than 1, then this particular sequence is supposed to converge. And what does it converge to? Lambda infinity equals to A lambda infinity plus B. This means lambda infinity equals to B over 1 minus A. Right? Okay, so I have this update equation lambda k plus 1 equals to this. So this, this term is less than 1. So this sequence is going to converge. And lambda infinity is minus c over 1 plus c over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus c. What do I get? minus 1, which is exactly what the Lagrange, this is exactly equal to lambda star. What does this imply? What does this exercise imply? It implies that even though we are assuming throughout the process that we are taking CK going to infinity, in most practical situations, it's not necessarily required for CK to go to infinity. As long as you pick C sufficiently large, so that this particular expression, this matrix, whatever. So remember, this, in this case, I have only one, one constraint, x1 minus 1 equals to 0. But in some cases, you might have a large number of constraints. You might have two, three, four constraints. In that case, lambda would be a four-dimensional object. And you want the spectral, you want C to be sufficiently large so that the spectral radius of the matrix here is less than 1. And as long as the spectral radius of the matrix is less than 1, you know that this particular sequence is going to converge. And it will converge to the optimal Lagrange, like the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the optimal solution. This is something you will actually observe in your assignment. So I've given you an assignment. It's a slight variation of this, uh, this problem. Uh, so I have, I have changed the lambda k update scheme a little bit. Uh, so you will be able to show that actually you get this kind of recursion where the spectral radius of A is very small. I mean, not very small, it's less than 1. And so the equation still converges to the optimal lambda star. So that's something you will do in assignment 4. But the other thing to note is, what happens if you pick C to be very, very large? If C is extremely large, then what happens? This term is close to 0, and this term is negative 1, close to negative 1. So you actually converge to the optimal solution extremely fast. Okay. 
So the whole reason why you want to pick CK going to infinity is because there will be a threshold after which this iteration is going to become a converging iteration and then it will converge to the optimal solution and if you keep taking C to be higher and higher, uh, you will converge much faster to the optimal solution. So the whole point of taking CK going to infinity is you want to, you want to figure out that you don't know what, at what threshold this whole thing is going to become a contraction map and uh, you also want to uh, increase the convergence rate, you want to improve the convergence rate even if it is beyond that threshold. So something that you will see when you are doing assignment four, okay? If you pick C to be very large, in that particular algorithm, it will lead to oscillations. So you will see the, those oscillations because I've changed the expressions a little bit. So you will see some oscillations and that because the matrix that you will find here will have uh, complex roots, okay? Yes. Complex eigenvalues, sorry. Can you explain what you mean by the contraction map coming? Yeah, so contraction map is coming up okay. two, three, two, three classes later. But uh, for the linear system case, I can just tell you what the contraction map means. You have lambda k plus one equals to a lambda k plus b. If rho a is less than one, then this map, let me call this F, no, F is already used. I need to give it another name. F, G, H, all of them are used. T, capital T of lambda K, then T is a contraction. Now what does it, what do I mean by contraction map? We will cover it in a, in a class, maybe next Wednesday or something we'll cover it. Any questions so far? Is it clear why we take CK going to infinity? Is this argument clear? Okay, we want this map A. So this A depends on C. And I want this map A of C. I want the row to be less than one. And as you increase the value of C, the, uh, the spectral radius of this starts becoming smaller and smaller and uh, it leads to convergence uh, beyond a certain threshold of C. And that's what we are trying to do in this algorithm. Now let's try to look at how does this algorithm change if we have inequality constraints as well, because this, uh, this algorithm, augmented Lagrangian, will also work if you have inequality constraints. So I want to cover that algorithm next. I want to minimize x in capital X, hx equals to zero, gx less than equal to zero. How can I convert this uh, problem into this form? We've done it before. We use that KKT. Uh, did we do it for KKT? No, we didn't do it for KKT. Right, but I want to convert this problem into this particular format. So I want to have only quality constraint. I don't want to have any quality constraint. What should I do? Uh, max is also one way to do it. I can do minimize f of x, h of x equals to zero, and max of zero gjx equals to zero for all j. 
So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is minimize x in capital X, z in R M. No, M is R R. F of x such that h of x equals to zero. gj of x plus zj square equals to 0 for all j from 1 to r. So I'm just adding a bunch of positive numbers here to make it equal, make this uh, an equal uh, e an equality sign, and then I'm minimizing over all such zj that is in RR. Now I can I can come up with the augmented Lagrangian for this one. Which is f of x lambda transpose h of x mu j gj x plus vj square no I need to do some summation also here. That's my augmented Lagrangian in this case, yes. Yeah, so basically whenever it is less than or equal to zero, if I add a positive number, and if I'm optimizing over those positive numbers, uh, uh, you can convert this inequality into an equal, you know, into a constraint with equality. Uh, why does that happen? Uh, let me think about it. So you're saying why does this and this, why are these two the same problems, right? That's what your question is. Oh, this one is easy. Uh, so, so if if I put this constraint, I'm saying that g, g j of x can be equal to zero or can be negative, uh, but because it's a max of zero comma negative value, it's still equal to zero. So this can take any value which is less than zero, less than equal to zero, and this max is still going to be equal to zero. But if it is positive, if this number becomes positive, then max of zero comma positive number is the positive number, so it doesn't meet the constraint, equality constraint. So that's why this one and this one are the same optimization problem. Now, why this one and this one is same? Uh, I think I need to prove that x star here is the same as x star there. That's what is needed in order to prove the equivalence between these two optimization problems. Why do you want to convert it to equality? Because I know how to solve this problem. I know how to solve the one with equality. I, somebody gave me a problem with inequality, so I want to come up with the algorithm for what happens when there is inequality constraint. 
So, you know, whenever you are doing algorithm design, you know things that already work. You get a problem which doesn't quite fit things that already work. Then you try to fit it. <laughs> so, Right, so we know, so barrier method works for the inequality constraint, but it has that constraint that, you know, remember the constraint was S equals to X such that GX is strictly less than zero, and then any X in whatever X, GX less than equal to zero can be approached by a sequence within this set S, right? That was a constraint for barrier method. Uh, now here I don't want to impose those constraints. Okay, so if this constraint is not satisfied for your problem, you can still apply the augmented Lagrangian method on your problem statement. So going back to his question, why are these two problems equivalent? How do I show that the X star here is also an X star here? Is an optimal solution here? Is that an obvious statement to make? Is that an obvious statement to make? I'm trying to think. So let's try to massage this particular problem. I have two minimizations here. One is with respect to x and the other one is with respect to z. So I'm going to figure out which one I should do first later on. This is still very complicated. Let's do a simpler one. Let's, do not, let's not assume that there is an equality sign. And let's assume that there is only one inequality constraint. Let's try to do the simplest, simplest problem first. How do I know that this problem is equivalent to that problem without the equality constraint? If I do minimization over z first, I get for every x, I will have a specific value of z. And then I will do minimization over x. This one's not giving me any insight. This will give me x star as a function of z. No, no, this is going to give me z as a function of x. It's going to give me z star as a function of x. So for every fixed value of x, I can solve this problem and I can get z star. The z star will be a function of x. And then I'm trying to minimize over all such x. Is it obvious that that particular x is going to be the optimal solution of this? Doesn't look obvious. I have to think. I know that this is true uh, because I've taught it for the last 10 years. <laughs> but I really don't know why this should be true. I might have studied it some time back maybe in 2015 or 2016, but I don't seem to recall the proof right now. We can spend five more minutes on this and try to see what's happening, yeah. See, maybe we should first uh, minimize for x and then Okay, let's try to minimize first for x and then for z. What do I get? I get x star of z. Original uh, inequality constraint is satisfied. So 
Ah, yeah, I think this is correct. Okay. So what am I solving here? Okay, so I need a nice place to draw a big diagram. So let's do it here. Good, I think that solves the problem. So this is my gx equals to zero. This is gx plus one equals to zero. This is my gx plus two equals to zero. And so on, right? So this is the this is the area over which I am minimizing the function. Okay? So what I'm going to do is for every fixed value of z, for every fixed value of z, I'm going to solve this problem. So for z equals to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.3, I'm going to get a value of x star square root of 2, x star of 1, x star of 0. Right? For every fixed value of z, I'm going to get a value of x star. And then I'm going to minimize the function over all such values of z. So I'm basically looking at this line, which is the line of x star z. And I'm minimizing the function along this line. And of course, that function will be optimal. Because we have already optimized along these curves. So I get this curve, which is the optimal solution along each of these curves. And then I'm going to optimize along this curve. And I'm going to get the global minimum over this entire region. So that makes perfect sense. Thank you. OK, so the argument is for every z, I'm going to solve this optimization problem. I get x star of z. And then I want to minimize over all z f of x star of z. I'm going to get z star. And then my x star, z star, is equal to the true x star of the optimization problem, which is this problem. Any question? Too much to handle? We still have 15 more minutes. <laughs> OK, is it clear that this is gx plus 1 line? This is gx plus 2 equals to 0 line. And then I'm going to optimize. And then I'm going to optimize along the z axis. And I'll get the optimal solution. This is just Sorry? This is, we're doing this just That's right. Rewrite. Yeah, that gives me the equivalence between this problem and this problem. The two problems are equivalent because I get the same x star in both these problems. Okay, that was a short detour. Now I'm, I'm uh, given this particular problem, I think I should also write it as a function of z. And then what was the way to do it? I want to minimize over x in capital X. I want to minimize over z in RR of LC x z lambda mu. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this particular problem first. I'm going to minimize with respect to z, and I'm going to solve this. Uh, let me put lambda k, mu k, and c k. And I'm going to get x k. Well, technically, I'll get x k and z k. 
but I don't really care about ZK. ZK is just an auxiliary variable. So this one gives me the following solution. Once I do the minimization of this particular uh, expression, I'm going to get minimum of x in x. fx plus lambda transpose hx plus c over 2 norm of hx square. plus 1 over 2 c using the and here and, and here yeah. Why are we running out the sum norm in this case norm is the same as summation of hi x square so here I have to add this zj square right so that's why I'm writing it as summation but this is actually equal to yeah, I, I equals one I two. Just asked why we were writing it like that that's because uh, I can't write it in a matrix notation okay. uh, I mean well I can write it as gx plus z1 square to z r square and then the norm and then the norm square that's the same thing but it's just a bit inconvenient to write it that way This is what this minimization over z of this particular term turns out to be. So this term is something that we are familiar with. This is the new term that gets added by minimizing this, these two terms with respect to zj. And these, uh, if you go through further derivation, we finally get the following algorithm. I want to minimize L C K X Lambda K mu K X is in capital X and Lambda K plus one equals Lambda K plus C K H X K and then mu K plus one. max 0 that's how we update the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the inequality constraint. This is the update equation for lambda k. This is the update equation for mu k. This is for all j. So 
So that's all I have for today. This is, uh, if you don't have any quality constraint, then of course this term will not have appear, this term will not appear, and you get the method of multiplies for equality constraint problem. If you have a generic problem with inequality constraints as well, you get the method of multipliers for inequality constraint problem. Remember that these problems will only work when x, this x, when you can, you are able to solve this particular problem easily. So this x should have some benefit. So for instance, it could be Rn. It could be a convex set on which projection is easy to do. It could be, a, uh, or you might use manifold suboptimization method to solve this problem. Okay, if if you have a set of inequality constraints in X, either you can push that inequality constraint here, and then you solve the problem in this way, or you use manifold suboptimization method to solve this problem, and keep only the nonlinear constraints here in the case of solving for mu kj. So there are many ways by which you can massage the problem. And depending on how you are massaging the problem, your algorithm might be faster or slower. And all of that toolbox is in your toolbox. You can pick whatever tools you need in order to solve the problem quickly and effectively. <laughs> Any question? Sorry? Uh, I mean, these functions can be nonlinear. This can be nonlinear. Both of these could be nonlinear. Okay. The objective function can also be nonlinear. This works for any problem, as long as x is, as long as this x is a continuous space. It can't be like set of integers. Yeah, yeah, because we are only talking about problems in Rn in this class. Okay, there's a whole set of tools you need to use when x is set of integers or set of 0, 1 raised to n or something like that. So uh, just, just so you know, uh, you know, uh, of course these problems are fairly general, but not all problems will have continuous x. So one example is when airlines do flight attendant scheduling or pilot scheduling then x is 0, 1 variable, like either the pilot is in the flight or pilot is not in the flight. There's no like 50% of the pilot is inside and 50% is outside. So uh, in industrial engineering department, a lot of problems appear where this x could be of this type. And if you look, if you think about Delta Airlines, how many pilots and air hostesses would Delta Airlines have? Any guess? 10,000, 15,000, something like that. So they are solving this problem with, with 10,000 variables every day because they have to schedule pilots and air hostesses every day and pilot can say, I'm not feeling good today, I'm not gonna come on the work and they have to resolve this entire optimization problem because the pilot has taken off for that particular day or that particular week. So this, Pilot scheduling and airline air hostess scheduling is a very, very difficult problem. And, uh, and you might have seen uh, in, uh, in, you know, in few years back, you might have seen that there is a lot of airline issues that happen because the pilot is not available or crew is not available and some weather event happened somewhere and pilots could not fly to a specific location. So all of that happens because they haven't taken all the constraints into account to solve the problem. Or sometimes you can have infeasibility because you don't have enough pilots to run the flights. So those are the situations when all these constraints cannot be met, they cannot solve the problem, so they have to come up with a heuristic, but the heuristic causes delay in the whole process. So you have to live with that, okay? But, uh, but we are not talking about these problems in this class, okay? This problem will require some class, I don't know if ISE has classes on integer programming. Yeah, I mostly work on that kind of Yeah, okay, so she works on this kind of problem, but I don't know why you're taking this class now. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, okay, so that's all I have for today. Uh, I think we've covered all about augmented Lagrangian. We'll talk about some other methods in the next class. Thank you.